a very good morning to all of you today we are going to continue with our second chapter in sectors of indian economy next topics okay and in today's module we are going to discuss the topics comparing the three sectors what is the meaning of final goods and services what is gdp and historical change in sectors comparing the three sectors okay the various production activities in the primary secondary and sec sec uh, tertiary sector produce a very large number of goods and services also the three sector have large number of people working in them so for comparison we look at two things number 1 how much goods and services are produced in each sector and number 2 how many people work in each sector in an economy there could be one or more sector which are dominant in terms of total production and employment while other sectors are relatively small in size so when we compare the three sectors we get to know in which production in which sector more production is there or in other what we can say more money is generated and by comparing the people number of people who are working we see this sector is giving more employment to the people how do we count the various goods and services and know the total production in each sector it is one of the very difficult task okay you with so many thousands of goods and services produced you might think this is an impossible task you might wonder how we can add up cars and computers nails and furniture so to solve the problem economists suggested that the value value in terms of rupees in case of india of goods and services should be used rather than adding up the actual numbers here i have taken a simple example to make things clear to you okay first of all remember every product or service has a value here i have taken five items from the primary sector suppose that in prime in primary sector only these five items are produced okay and in a year after selling the wheat what we get the final output we get 2500 crores of rupees okay the so in primary sector the wheat is sold of 2500 crores of rupees rice 3000 milk 5000 crores of rupees iron ore 10000 crores of rupees and fishing 2200 crores of rupees so final output it comes out to be 22700 crores of rupees so in simple words the primary sector in primary sector 22700 crores of rupees is generated in a year now we come to the secondary sector in secondary sector again i have taken the five things okay to make calculation easy so in textile say maybe cotton or jute textile the goods are produced and after selling the goods in the market the sector generates 3000 crores of rupees okay in a year similarly minerals are processed and many of the minerals are finally sold in the market okay and while doing so 5000 crores of rupees are generated cars okay upset by selling the cars in the market the sector generates say 10000 crores of rupees hardware like computers keys and all the sector generates 4000 crores of rupees and by selling the mobile phones okay the sector generates 6000 crores of rupees so total output of the secondary sector comes to be 28000 crores of rupees similarly for tertiary sector okay by giving the communication services the sector generates 7500 crores of rupees by providing transportation services the tertiary sector generates 10000 crores of rupees by uh, through tourism 9000 crores education 8000 and health 10000 crores of rupees so you can see in finally the tertiary sector is generating 44500 crores of rupees in a year so when you look at three uh, at these three sectors okay the income of the Uh, tertiary sector is maximum while primary sector is minimum that is final output from the sector okay but while doing so we have to take one very important thing in our mind okay and that is only the final only the value of final goods and services are added in final income of the sector not intermediate goods the final product is the product which reaches the customer here i have taken the example of a biscuit to make biscuit we need 
wheat flour, sugar, salt, milk, milk products, color, water, fat, oil. Okay, all these are your intermediate goods. You are using them to make your final good. And your final good or your final product is biscuit. This biscuit is finally sold in the market. And when you purchase this biscuit say of rupees 40, so, uh, biscuit which is your final good, if the cost of final product is 40 rupees, it already includes a value of all the intermediate goods. So, we are not going to add sugar, wheat, flour again and again. We are only going to add the value of the final product which is reaching to the customer. Similarly, another example we can have cotton, raw cotton when it reaches the market, it says its cost is 50 rupees per kg. So, this is the final product of the primary sector. But when it goes to the next level, for making fabric from the cotton, we are need, we need labor, water, electricity, yarn, machines, and all. And then fabric is ready, which is sold in the market, say rupees hundred rupees per meter. Okay, so this hundred rupees already includes all this cost, which is required to produce the final good. Suppose the fabric is used by another company to make ready-made shirts. This ready-made shirt, okay, and sold in the market, say rupees four hundred rupees for one shirt so this shirt already includes all the intermediate goods which are required to make it so final product is your shirt which is of rupees 500 so 400 rupees for one shirt so the value of final goods and services produced in each sector during a particular year provides the total production of the sector of that year now add the value of all the final goods and services produced in sec in a sector so we get 95,200 crores of rupees and this gives you the GDP that is gross domestic product of the country. The GDP of a country is a, to, is a value of all final goods and services produced within a country during a particular year. GDP shows how big the economy is. It's now next topic is historical change in sectors. Okay. First, in this table, I, uh, first is stages of development, then sector dominates and the reason. So, in, in the initial stages, in all developed and developing countries, your primary sector is dominating. Agriculture is one of the oldest occupation in the world. All countries of the world in initial stages dependent on agriculture and related activities. Then the focus shift to the secondary sector. As method of farming changed, agriculture sector began to grow and many people take up other activities there were increased number of crafts person and traders with new method of manufacturing were introduced factory come up and started expanding so the next in the second stage of development moves secondary sector started dominating the other sectors and in the present time especially in last 100 years there has been further shift from the secondary to tertiary sector in developed countries due to change in information technology the service sector has become the most important in terms of total production. Okay, so in the present time, a tertiary sector is most dominating sector. Okay, this change we are going to discuss further in our next topic. Thank you. Have a nice day.